to the son I might have one day. You are not the first boy I've had to raise. You're not the first boy who I've had to tell right from wrong. You are not the first boy who I've had to teach how to approach a woman. See, my job is to ensure that before I send you out into this world, that you are right within. So I need to ensure that you know how to respect people, especially women from their head to their toes and everything in between. See, I will do my best to ensure that you never have to know the affliction of a cane. I will try my best to ensure that you never see the color of your skin as a stain. And when they ask you who raised you, tell them that you walk with the confidence of a king because your mother praised you, because her words changed you, because her love made you. And when you learn how to walk, may you walk with your mother's pride. May you step with her mother's stride. When you learn how to walk, may you learn how to go the extra mile. When you learn how to talk, May everything that comes out of your mouth be better than silence. May you learn how to hold back and swallow any rude comments, misogynistic jokes, lies. May they rot in your throat so that they never have to see the light of day. When you learn how to talk, may you never be too shy to raise your hand to answer a question for fear of not being right. May you speak with the same conviction God spoke with when he said, let there be light. When you learn how to talk, May you learn how to ask questions. May you ask why your best friend who is a girl next door has to be in the house by 6 p.m. because of your kind. May you ask why it is only your kind that is privileged enough to take a walk at 11 p.m. at night. And when talking to a girl, when adolescence is boiling your blood, may you learn how to see past her legs. May you be wise enough to know that a woman's eyes are not on her chest. And when you have your first crush, may you be wise enough to know that pulling a girl's hair or trying to fight her are not appropriate ways to tell a girl that you like her. But if you're lucky, maybe your mother will teach you her way with words. Maybe you will learn to lose yourself in the worlds you create on paper just the same way she does. And one day, May you be wise enough to not believe everything you hear about yourself. May you never fall prisoner to the chains around your neck in the name of flex. May other boys think they are kings until you come next. And if I have to promise you one thing, it's this. I promise that every day I will take my pen and my paper and I will sketch you in all of my books and I will open them up to look at you whenever I forget how God looks. Mm. Mm. You were preaching to me, ladies and gentlemen. That was Mumbi Masharia. Um, and she's a spoken word poet, obviously. And, and that was... Um, to that the sun to the, I may have someday. To the sun I may have someday. Yeah. Oh, that was so beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit more about that piece before we even move into your story? I was writing a piece actually to my future daughter. Okay. And then somewhere while writing that poem, I realized there are a lot of poems of to my future daughter or things I want to tell my daughter. But then I realized no one really, I've never had pieces that talk about like what I want to tell my son mm. to raise. And um, you know, there was something I was thinking about like about the men we interact with every day. And right. I was thinking about if I was, you know, when, when you meet a man and you think who raised you, right. you know, I was thinking, if I raised you, would I have done a better job? Mm. And so that's what got me thinking of what I would do oh, for my future beautiful. son. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I think it spoke to a lot of the issues that we're trying to face and, and unlearn even as a society. So I love that, that you went against the grain and you did something for your unborn son, your future son. Yeah. So let's hear a little bit more about your story. When did you first discover your love for poetry and for words? So I discovered my love for poetry first. It was in my love for writing. It was in high school. I always used to love writing, mm -hmm. like um, compositions, everything. I would write even without being asked yeah. to write anything. And so there was a competition once in high school, um, which was an inter-school poetry competition. And there was a category for original compositions. Okay. So I remember my English teacher told me to just try submit something. And so I did, which was the first poem I ever wrote. It was called A Stained Wedding Dress. 
and I was actually disqualified from the competition because the judges said it's not poetry. Because at the time, no one really understood what spoken word is. You know, poetry was very structured, like the right. rhymes have to be a certain way. On paper, it has to look a certain way, the stanzas and all. What? Yeah, so when they saw mine, they were like, we don't know what this is, yeah. but this is not poetry. Yeah, so I was disqualified from that competition. Right, okay. And did you agree with them when they said that? No, I didn't. But then also at the time, I didn't know what it is I was okay. writing. Okay. Because I hadn't met other spoken word poets, so I knew what it is I was doing, mm -hmm. but I didn't even know if there was an audience for it. Okay, yeah. I hear you. Okay. So, uh, so tell me more. I've, what happened after that? At which point did you then think, you know what, I'll still continue with this, even though they're not calling it poetry? Yeah, so after that, I got into Kwani Open Mic, which is an event that used to happen, I think, every first Tuesday of the month yeah. in town. So I remember I went the first time, and when I was sitting in the audience and I was listening to people, they were doing the exact same thing that I was writing, and I was like, oh, this is actually a thing. Yeah, so I remember my mom took me to that first Kwani Open Mic, mm -hmm. and then I performed there. And then I was taken to Poetry After Lunch, which happens at Kenya National Theatre okay. every Thursday. They give free lunch and then afterwards it's usually an open mic poetry session. Yeah. And then from there, that's just when I got into the poetry community in Kenya. And what's yeah. that been like? Um, especially since, you know, we were speaking to another artist earlier and they were saying how quite often art um, is regarded as well, is that really work? Is that really what you want to do? Is that just your hobby on the side? So did you ever face that kind of, you know, questioning or an, and interrogation? And if so, how did you still, you know, stick to your vision? Was that difficult for you? Yeah, it was because at the same time, I'm currently a law student okay. at Riara University. Okay. So um, there's always a balance that needs to be struck because law is a very demanding course and then poetry is also very demanding because it's my passion and you know I want to do this for as long as I can and keep writing so there has been that question that I've been asked like you know why are you letting poetry you know take over when law should be what you're focusing on because people don't really understand the passion and and also like are you really going to earn from poetry from art so um, I've just had to learn how to block out when people tell me such things yeah. and then just be like this is the talent I've been given I need to do something with it so wherever it will take me I'll figure it out along the way I love that I love that I know you have another piece for us um, uh, I think this one is on depression, is it? Yes. Okay, so why don't we do that? Um, and then we dive back into the conversation. Okay. okay. When was the last time you asked someone close to you how often they think of killing themselves? When was the last time you asked someone close to you how often they try to heal themselves? Last night, I googled the rate of suicide, 7,000 yearly in Kenya on average to be exact. So when I ask you how your day was, I need you to tell me exactly that. When I ask you how you're doing, I need a reply that implies that you will not try to turn yourself into another statistic. We need to talk so I can assure you suicide is not artistic. We need to talk. So that before you make me grieve for you, I can remind you that when you said you loved me enough to die for me, I said I must have loved you more because I loved you enough to live for you. We need to talk before someone manages to convince you to believe that depression is a white man's disease we need to talk and talk until this is something we are talking about with ease we need to talk so that in case no one told you today i can remind you that you are important and you are worthy and you are enough and you are loved and if that doesn't work we still need to talk so I can remind you that the cost of funerals in Kenya can be up to 1.2 million. So if you died, you would not only leave us sad, but broke. So at the very least, don't kill yourself until you can afford to die. Don't kill yourself until Kenya wins the World Cup. Don't kill yourself until you have exhausted your DSTV subscription for this month. Don't kill yourself until you can finally manage to finish your Ugali Skuma Wiki and Stew at the same time. 
And if somehow you manage to go through my list, call me so I can give you more reasons to live. Call me so I can remind you, yes, there will be a hundred mornings when you don't want to wake up, but I promise you will find the will and you will call me. Call me at least to find out if I want to talk. Call people. Ask people how they're doing. Tell them that you might not know exactly what it is they are feeling, but assure them that there is no expiration date on the process of healing. Mm. I really do feel like I've just come from a sermon right now. <laughs> and I were, like halfway through, I was like, don't, don't interrupt. But I wanted to shout like, amen. Yeah. We need to talk. Yeah. That's the name of, the, of, the, of that p yeah, poem? It has several names. Um, oh, okay. It has, it's called Live For Me. Yeah. And then it's also called We Need To Talk. Wow. Yeah. Um, what inspired that? It was inspired by just our generation. Basically, um, people are going through a lot and people don't talk about what it is they're going through. Um, so it was just a way of saying, like, listen, talk about it, you know, th before it turns into something bigger. Tell someone what it is they're going through. You know, when, you, when I ask you how you're doing, I'm not asking in vain. I genuinely want to know how are you doing. You know, are you okay? Right. Are you going through something? Yeah. yeah. And I like that you said, you know, call me um, so that, you know, I can speak to you and I can check on you, but also so that you can ask how I am. Yeah. I mean, I've completely butchered you. You put it way better than I've just put it. But that it's also a two-way street. Yeah. Um, I love that. And I, I'm curious to learn from you. Where do you draw your inspiration from for, for all your pieces? How do you know what to talk about, what, the, what to theme um, your poems? So I've had to struggle with that for a very long time because I have different styles of writing. Okay. Sometimes there's just a message I really want to put out and so I'll write it. Sometimes I'll just have a line in my head and I'm like, I want this line to form a piece. So I'll be like, the piece is gonna end like this. So then I work backwards. Or I want the piece to start like this and then I work um, from there. But then um, also I have a lot of unfinished pieces. I have more unfinished pieces than I have finished ones. So how, so what do you do with that? Because they're almost like little babies that are sitting here and you're just like, wait, wait, mama's not done yet. Yeah. So what, what do you then do? Um, sometimes I combine them okay. um, into other pieces or if I'm writing a piece and then I'm stuck, I'll go back to the ones I didn't finish and then I'll incorporate them. And sometimes I just keep them. I have so many pieces that I don't perform, but I just write them because of that point in time I just wanted to let something out okay yeah uh, what's been the biggest or most memorable milestone for you as a as a spoken word artist mm -hmm. okay the biggest I have several I think mm -hmm. um, my first one would have to be I when I participated in Islam Africa in 2016 mm -hmm. Um, I was the first runners up in the Grand Slam 2016, so that was really good. Um, wow. Yeah. Then last And year, was that your first competition? Yeah, that was my first wow. competition. Wow. Yeah. The first competition I ever entered was Slam Africa. Okay. Yeah. Then Grand Slam, I was first runners up. Yeah. And then that's why I met a lot of now my friends in poetry. I met them because we competed against each other. And then some of them were like, we kind of like write the same. And yeah, so Slam Africa was a really good experience. Yeah. Um, then last year, I went to Dar es Salaam um, to teach a workshop to uh, secondary school kids. So that was really nice, performing in um, somewhere I've never been. Yeah. And I led a workshop where the theme was, what are you from? So not necessarily yeah. like where are you yeah. from, but what are you from? What makes you, you? That so, sounds like a great conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I can only imagine what came of that. And I, yeah, and I, I guess for you to be able to transfer those skills and pass them along. Yeah. Must have, been, must have been a memorable experience. Yeah, it was a really amazing workshop. I remember I asked the kids like, what are you from? And they said, I am from my mother's cooking or I'm from friendship, I'm from um, 
the beach i'm from yeah just the things that make you you so that was a really really good experience yeah oh lovely okay so i think we can get one more piece from you yes. and then we'll bid you farewell but one more piece from mombi masharia okay. ever since the last time tuonge ime pita wiki tano ime bidi ni jita him kutano hiyo mapenzi nilikupa sai either huitaki ama huihitaji na sijui mbona nimekuwa patient for so long maybe juma daktari waligoma ni funny yani kila siku najikumbusha kukusahau but siwezi sijui vile to get through him wezi in a different life i think ulikuwa conductor juli ni beba nikakutupia mbao i guess you needed the balance juli ni change so when do ulikuwa anga front row kinishangilia squeeze hata uwezi niangalia na we only need to be a place jai kwa thanks to you udhiru yote inanijua kayole inanitambua umoja hadi mudhura but sasa hata uwezi nionea huruma so maybe ni mimi na kusumbua tu sana jitu wewe ni kati likutana tu jana but i know that's not true juli kwa karibu kuni introduce kwa family yako bro wako mamako nafi wako mdogo mwenye sasa amekuwa lakini sasa itabidi hawata wai nijua hawata wai jua huyu ndo msichana alikuwa na kijana wao hawata wai jua huyu ndo msichana alikuwa anataka kushonesha vitenge zao hawata wai jua vile tulikuwa hii uchungu ni kasi kundefu jamii ni jua haitawaitua but sasa sasa nasikia una mtoto njiani ya mshoko na raha sana na mbinu ndilikuwa nataka kukupea mtoto na sisiri but i hope upate mtoto msichana kwa mrembo tuka mimi na apatane na chali tuka wewe na siku moja kwa nyumba ukimwona akiingia kilia maybe utanikumbuka na utaelewa so i guess it's true vila wahenga wenzangu walinena ni ngumu kumpenda asiyejipenda mm. preach about heartbreak <laughs> <laughs> that was Mumbi Masharia ladies and gentlemen you can follow her on Instagram Kenyan Shilling thank you so much this has been lovely um, but we have the S tips coming up for you so don't go anywhere thank you to Park Inn by Radisson for the beautiful backdrop for today's show now the S tips that will help you in life and beauty and everything in between here you go so today's S tip is a beauty tip and one that I've been using a lot more recently now that, I don't know, I, the weather is just not agreeing with my skin. Hence the reason I've had a few breakouts here and there. Um, and one of the best things that you could do if you do happen to have a zit, a pimple, whatever the case, um, is just use a little bit of tea tree essential oil. Just pour a couple drops on a cotton bud and then rub it on the pimple. And why this is particularly amazing is that it's really antiseptic and, or it's got antiseptic properties rather. And it also dries out the pimple. So, most days I'll find that whenever I do that, by the time it's morning, it's quite dry and it will just like sort of fall off by morning. You know what I mean. If you've had a pimple, you know what I mean. Like that little yellow bit dries, gone. And then hopefully you won't get another one. And what's great about this again is that it's antiseptic, so it allows for the germs not to spread. But it's really simple. All you need, tea tree essential oil, cotton bud. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a pimple-free day and we'll see you tomorrow. 